God is so good. Amen. Worthy to be praised. Amen. Thank God for the ministry of music. For our choir, our musicians, all of you, children of God, I thank God for you. As we prepare to read into our hearing the word from the Lord for us, the people of God, pray God's continuous blessings in your life. And I pray for you to be encouraged to know that whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're going through, you heard a songwriter say, turn it over to Jesus. Give it to the Lord. Don't let your problems get you down. Don't let your worries, disappointments, failures, heartaches, dilemmas, whatever it is, turn it over to Jesus. Amen. To us, which I would call a sanctified few that are here this morning, I welcome you to the house of God for another Sunday morning of worship service. Thank God for y'all's commitment and for your desire to be here. And I thank God for your presence this morning. We are the children of this ministry. And it's more to this church than pews and brick and mortar and windows and lightings and trimmings and trappings. We are the church. Man, the building. We are the one whom the Holy Ghost lives within. And to the men, I thank you. To the women, I thank you. Yes, to our children, I thank God for you. Reverend Rawls, God bless you. The officers of this church, musicians, urshers, those sisters that are laboring with our little ones in the fellowship hall, children's ministry, God bless you. Justin, all of you, I thank God for you. Word from the Lord this morning comes from the 15th chapter of the book of Luke. Luke chapter number 15. I'm going to begin reading at verse number 1. Thank you, Hannah, for playing softly. Hallelujah. Luke chapter number 15 beginning at verse number 11, and I'll begin reading there. Therein we will glean the message for today. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with wiretous living. And when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want and he went and joined himself to a certain to, to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him and when he came to himself he said how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am not worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. He arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off his father saw him and had compassion 
and ran and fell on his neck on his neck and kissed him and the son said unto him father I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son but the father said to his servant bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither a, the fatted calf and kill it and let us be merry for this my son was dead and is alive again he was lost and is found and they began to be merry the help of the Lord verses 11 through 24 of chapter number 15 of the book, book of Luke I give us this text saints of God nobody wants you when you're down and out they'll preach nobody wants you this is a lesson pertains to the family unit and how we as children grow up to a certain age and when we think we want to have it our way do it our way go our way it's got to be our way and we're ready to leave home as quick as we possibly can. I used to say them words to myself. When I grow up, as soon as I'm able to, I'm leaving here. Not only am I leaving home, I'm leaving Picayune. Getting as far away from here. You know why? Because I'm grown. I want to do my own thing. There's a lesson depicts the story of a family unit. And it tells of a father that had two sons in this parable, this teaching that Jesus gave us. And it gives us a glimpse into the vulnerability of us as humans when we think we're right. And we think we're ready. And we want to do what we want to do. We want to go where we want to go. We want to live how we want to live. The thing about this, this thing about this lesson today is that this father was well off enough to have something for his sons. And if you listen to how the Bible reads, when the son came to his father and asked for his portion of an inheritance that fell to him, didn't read nowhere in the Bible where the father said, son, I'm not going to give you anything. All right. All right. Didn't read where this father had any contention mm -hmm. with his young son. Well, yeah. I'm quite sure he knew as a father mm -hmm. that he wasn't ready. Right. Like a lot of us Amen. weren't ready. Amen. I'm quite sure he could have told his son, you're not going anywhere. And if you try to leave, I'm going to stop you. Bible didn't read it that way. Jesus did not tell the story of what we read about in that way. For it gives us a deeper glimpse into the mindset of what parenting a mother and a father has to deal with in their children. I'm talking about love now. I'm, I'm, talk, I'm talking about a real home now. I'm not talking about no around the way kind of stuff. I'm talking about real parenting because quite obviously this man had enough to hold back to bless his son not if he left but when he decided to leave. So he gave him what fell to him. Gave it to him. And I can imagine in my mind how happy the son was. Broke as he want to be. You know, I've been broke. I ain't got nothing, but I want what you got for me, Dad. I want, I want what's mine. Like, he really, really, really owed him something. Listen to the, to the lesson this morning. Because the father gave him his portion. Bible said the son 
got all of his stuff together, whatever he had, which wasn't much, wasn't, wasn't much of anything. And I can imagine him, and I like to use my imagination, saints of God. Oh, there are things come in my mind when God gives me a message, you know, how to correlate it to the message to let it speak to us to make it relative, you know. But y'all remember that, 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 that movie, uh, The Wizard of Oz and the Yellow Brick Road and how Dorothy was down the Yellow Brick Road and all, everything was all fine and happy, you know, and all that happened. You know, she was running, the Yellow Brick Road looked so happy and bright, you know, like a Hollywood movie. She should come up on the, the, wicked, the wicked witch. And, uh, and all them little fellas that was flying around with her trying to make her life miserable. And that's how I think about it sometimes when we read how life is. It's not a fairy tale. Life is not a joke. It's not a game. It's not something to be played with. But us in our human frailties and our folly because we have not lived long enough. When we're at the sun's age, we don't know nothing about living. Amen. We don't know nothing about life. We think we do Amen. until we get out there and start living. Amen. And that's how it was with this young man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But the Bible said he left home in merriment. <laughs> and he had a crowd Amen. when he got to where he was. Amen. That's where I got the title of this message today Amen. from Bobby Womack. Anybody, anybody? Amen. Bobby Womack up in here. Nobody, anybody know about Bobby? Amen. All right, y'all save, sanctify, don't go feel no love. Okay. All right. There was a song written by a very uh, popular R&B artist named Bobby Womack. He sang a song about a, a man that had a whole lot like this young man had. And he had a whole lot and when he had what he had Everything was popping. They was finger popping. They was turning it up. They was having a party. They was having a good time. But it was all on his dime. Anybody ever had a good time on your dime? Look, I'm financing all this. Look around. They're your friends because you got something to give them. Not that they bringing anything to you, but they taking all your stuff. They partying at your house. They sitting around on your furniture. And when you go off somewhere, you financing everything. And oh, we got it good. That's how it was with this young son. Got off to a faraway country. And he had friends. Like he never had friends before. And we didn't read about it in lesson, brothers and sisters. Help me, Lord. When he left home, he had a whole lot of friends following him off. Think about it. He left by himself. Went to a far away country by himself. Because he had it like that, whole lot of folk gathered around him just to take what he had. The read in the lesson, nowhere where they said they gave him anything. But they sponged off him and they, they, they took off him. Anybody ever had anybody do that to you? I don't like being used. I've been used. I don't, it don't feel good when you realize, well, you really done been used. And I ain't going to make it like Bill Wither said. Y'all pray for me because I listen to all these songs when I got this message. I'm trying to find some help. I Lord, you know, I mean, like y'all, I mean, y'all, if y'all don't ever listen to anything other than, you know, amazing grace, God bless you. I'm happy for you. You know, but, but, in my upbringing and in my life, I've listened to more than that. So don't think I'm not saved. It's just that I've listened to some other uh, types of music in my life. And there was one song, I don't like being used. And Bill Woodson said, keep on using me. To use me up. Y'all only knew how good it felt to be used. You know, I'm, I'm telling you, all, it don't feel good when you realize somebody using you. Now, we don't know. Before y'all go to sleep up in there, well, you don't know they're using you, okay? But you, man, my, man, you just use me. And I don't want to be bothered with you no more. Go on about your way. Go on, just leave me alone right now. Amen. And that's how it happened in the lesson this morning. Where this young man came to a place where he was broke. And the Bible said he spent 
his money on riotous or frivolous living. Like a lot of us, some of us have lived frivolously. We had to learn the lessons in life. We had to grow to a point of maturity where I realized I don't want to live like this anymore. And I wasn't raised to be like this anymore. I wasn't raised to go out to a pig sty or a pig pen and feed some hogs and live with hogs. I wouldn't. I've seen some. Some hogs. I don't want to live with them. Are y'all listening to me today? The Bible said things got so bad. A famine in the land. Like a famine in his life. Like a famine happens in our life sometimes. There's been some times in my life, boy, I said, I've had it. I'm like, look, man, look. if you get in the bed, I wouldn't know what to do. Amen. But oh, Amen. when trouble comes. Yeah. 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 Oh, when things get a little tight. Right. Right. And some hardness come in your life. And you can't pick and choose a famine. The Bible says the famine came in the land and it may have been because it was short of bread and water yes, or food or whatever. Yes, I don't know, but there was a famine that the Bible said. Amen. And everything changed in this man's life. Uh -huh. And I'm here to tell you, uh -huh. sometimes things will change in our life. Yes, yes, you got to be ready. You got to wake up. Uh -huh. You got to realize and you got to know uh -huh. some things that I've been doing, yes. I don't have to do anymore. Amen. And the way I've been living, I don't have to live this way anymore. There was something that woke up in this young man's life when he realized, I have a father that loves me. I have a home that I was raised up in. And I had the blessing of a family that loves me. And that's what the father represents today. I don't care how it hurts. I don't care how wrong we've done. I don't care how messed up we have been. It does not matter how far we've gone and doing wrong. When we wake up and realize, I ain't got to live like this. I ain't got to be like this. I ain't got to walk like this. I ain't got to hang out with these kind of people. He came to himself. What the Bible said, he came to himself. He began to remember. And he thought about home. Get back to the yellow brick road. That's what Dorothy said. All the while she was gone. To the land of Oz. All this stuff will preach. And it'll teach us something if we let it. Now if you sit up in here like you got it all together. I ain't never done nothing. I ain't been no wrong man. You ain't talking to me reverend. I've never done it. You've done something. You've been somewhere you weren't supposed to go. You done rubbed elbows with somebody you weren't supposed to be rubbed elbows with. And you learn some life lesson. Hey, I don't want to fool around with them no more. I wasn't raised this way. This young man grew up and he admitted to himself, I really messed up. I made a bad decision. But you know what? He realized I can ask for forgiveness. I can get myself up. And the same way I left, I can ask for forgiveness and restoration. And I can turn around and go back home. Home is a good place. It was daughter said, ain't no place like home. Any rhythm of ours, people up in there know what I'm talking about. What a great, what a great movie. What a great story. What a great, what a great lesson in life of how you can persevere. You're going to make me uh, preach another, talk about another song, Rev, Rev Rawls. What, what uh, Teddy Pentagram said, where are all my friends? Y'all remember that one? Where are all my friends? You had it like that, look around, they all gone. Amen. Amen. That's what happened to this young man. But the father represents the love of God. The father in the lesson today represents the willingness of a father to wait on his son, to keep praying for his son. For when he came and the son realized, I want to go back to my family. Father didn't reject him when he saw him. Uh, how dare you? Where all that money I gave you? How dare you come back here? I don't want to be bothered with you. I don't want to have anything to do with you. Hallelujah. But he did like a real father does. He did and reacted like a real father. Full of love and compassion. 
mercy and forgiveness. And he welcomed him back home. And this is how God does us. The Bible said the father couldn't wait when he looked down the road. And I'm quite sure he had been looking before this day he saw his son. I'm quite sure he'd been praying and praying, Lord, bless my son. Keep my son. Look over my son. Watch my child. Bless my children. Keep an angel and kept about them. And when they did it with hurt, cover them with love. I'm so glad the father saw his son and he ran down the road. Hallelujah. And he hugged him and he kissed him on his neck. And he was thinking in his mind, I'm so glad I got my son back home. I'm so glad he was lost, but now he's found. He was down, but now he's up. Hallelujah. The song may say, nobody wants you when you're down and out. Well, I got news for you. There is a man, and his name is Jesus. When nobody else wants you, Jesus does. When nobody want to help you, Jesus will. When nobody want to give you anything, God can. He got it. He'll provide. He'll make a way. He'll wash you up. He'll renew you. You can have a party in Jesus. You can rejoice in the Lord. I'm so glad. The Father, he had a party. Put a robe on it. Fix a fatty cap. Put a ring on his finger. And everybody get together. We talk about a home going. It's all right to have a home going in Jesus. God will love you with an everlasting love. God will keep you in the midst of your storm. God will lift you up when you feel like you're down. He'll bring you through when you think you can't make it. Hallelujah. He'll do it for you in Jesus' name. Come on and stand to your feet. Nobody wants you. When you're down and out. But you know what? I ain't going to leave us hung out like that. That's how the story ends. Think about the rejoicing time this man had when he had his son back home. Hallelujah. No place. No better place to be than in the arms of Jesus. Can you feel him this morning? Let him love you this morning. Come on, brothers and sisters. Don't, don't pray hard to get. We all want to be loved. We all need some love. And can't nobody do it like Jesus. He'll love you. He'll love all the hurt away. He's a way maker. Hallelujah. The doors of the church are open. There is anybody in the house of God today has not been saved have not been washed in the blood some of Jesus the doors of his church victories anybody during the I want to be saved I want to be washed in the blood of the lamb anybody call to the hallelujah you Thank will you, Jesus. be healed. You may take your seat. Speak over yourself. God bless you. Curse yourself. Bless you. Hear the Lord. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself. Sometimes you have to speak victory during the test. And no matter how you feel, sweet, you will be healed. Speak over yourself. Encourage yourself. Sometimes you have 
have to speak over yourself. The pressure is all, all around. But God is present here for the enemy. Created walls, the remember giants. Jerusalem. Hallelujah. 